Welcome to Nona's Here. And I'm Nona. Now I know it's been a really long time since I've been on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version of what has happened. On July 11th, Grumpy Grandpa and I were in Biloxi for a little fun time. And an 87 year old woman was on her phone and out of nowhere, she made a left hand turn right in front of us. Fortunately, there was very little traffic around us and there was nowhere for us to go except to hit her. When she turned in front of us, she said she didn't see us, which I don't know how that was because we were in Grumpy Grandpa's relatively new big red truck. But when she got in front of us, she stopped. So the driver's front end barely caught her back end, but I was in the passenger seat and we broadsided her and it totally wrecked our truck. Total. It was totaled. So thank God she was not injured. She refused any medical treatment. Grumpy Grandpa had a few bumps and bruises, but I was seriously injured. The uh, airbags all dis uh, imploded and the cab filled with either smoke or dust from the airbags. I know what it feels like to be an animal in the zoo because all the people were looking in saying, open the doors, open the doors. Well, Grandpa thought we were pinned in, we weren't, but I had the presence of mind to reach down and unlock the doors. Grumpy Grandpa could get out. He kept asking me if I was okay. And I said, yes, I knew I was alive and there was no blood, but I knew I was really hurt. I couldn't get out of the car, but Grumpy Grandpa could, and we called, all the voices came on, and we asked for an ambulance, fire truck, police. And the lady behind us came up and told Grumpy Grandpa she saw the whole thing, gave him her telephone number, name, and address. And uh, when the, everyone came to the accident site, I said I couldn't get out, that my chest hurt. So they got a body board, which is better than a body bag, and got me out of the uh, truck and into, a nam into an ambulance. And they transported us to the local emergency room where they did a very cursory uh, exam, not very extensive, and said I had a chest injury. So, the uh, hotel sent security and security picked us up from the emergency room and took us back to the hotel and on the way stopped at the pharmacy to get me some uh, pain medicine and muscle relaxers. Well, it took two days, three days to get a rental car, don't ask me why Biloxi doesn't have rental cars, to get back to Pensacola. And when we got back to Pensacola, Grumpy Grandpa took me to an emergency room here and they immediately said after an extensive exam that I needed to go to a trauma hospital. So I was transferred, uh, transported to a uh, local trauma hospital where I was admitted to the critical care floor where I was for six days, and then I was released um, on the seventh day. I had pneumonia. I had seven fractured ribs, which I really didn't even know I had because uh, they say fractured ribs are very painful, but I didn't know I had any because my sternum was fractured, and that was so painful that I didn't feel anything else. I also had the bruises where my seatbelt was, and the seatbelt, wear your seatbelts. I'm sure the seatbelt saved my life, but it also caused the fractured sternum, which is better than being killed. Um, so anyway, uh, I was in the uh, critical care uh, floor for six days. I was treated for pneumonia. I was on uh, heavy pain medicine. The only time I talked was asked to, for pain medicine and the only time they refused me pain medicine was when my blood pressure fell too low. 
So uh, after seven days, I came home and I had home care nursing for about six weeks. And I had a nurse twice a week, uh, physical therapy twice a week, and a speech therapist twice a week because of my pneumonia. Um, I, my lungs were filled and I couldn't breathe and I couldn't talk except for three or four words at a time. So I had to do a lot of breathing exercises to clear up my lungs to um, be able to breathe and speak. And at that time, when I first came home, I used my walker and the only things I could do was go to the bathroom by myself, stand in front of the sink and brush my teeth and wash my face. And um, if grumpy grandpa put my food on my lap in front of me, I could feed myself. My arms weren't injured, but because of the pain in my sternum, I couldn't use my arms. But that has, of course, gotten much better. I'm currently in physical therapy to continue uh, getting my balance back, my uh, core strength back, and um, everything else and back in working condition. It was a miracle, my fake knees, I have two fake knees, knee replacements, they held straight. Uh, my kyphroplasty in my back held and my Inspire held. So those were three miracles I was very uh, blessed with. I did not have neck injury, back injury, head injury. Uh, the worst injury was my uh, fractured sternum, which I still have some residual discomfort with and they said six months to a year for that. Then four weeks to the day, I had a, a robotic uh, hysterectomy. That was a walk in the park. I'm all healed from that, everything's fine. That was to have been done in July, but of course it was delayed until October till um, the trauma doctor released me. She, When she admitted me, she said that I looked in pretty rough shape which I figured I was in really bad shape because she admits people all day long through the uh, trauma department. And she said, now she could be lying, but I don't think she was, uh, but I don't remember seeing her for the first five days that she checked on me every day. I was really in pretty bad shape. Um, and like I said, the only time I ever talked to anybody was to ask for pain medicine and sometimes they refused me because my blood pressure fell so low. But um, after I got home, after about mm, six to eight weeks, I was doing much better. I'm doing much better now, but I couldn't start crafting until about the end of September. So that's what I have for you now. The videos are very short. I have four projects to show you. The, the projects may have taken me two days, but the videos are only about three or four minutes long because I could craft a little bit and then I'd have to rest and then go back and craft a little bit and then go back and rest. So the videos are short, but the crafting took me quite a long time just because I have low energy, but I'm doing much better. And I'll have another video for you very shortly because I'm continuing to uh, craft and do more Christmas crafting. So I have more things coming up. Now, if you haven't subscribed, I wish you'd hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the word all so you won't miss any of my videos and I have more coming up and I promise I'll be doing videos on a more continuous basis now. Also, if you like my video, I sure wish you'd give me a thumbs up and that would really help. I am back and I uh, plan on doing videos more continuously now. I'm feeling much better and I'm working on getting my strength back and you can help me by subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. That would lift my spirits and I would certainly appreciate it. Okay, let's get to my craft table and I'll show you what I've been doing. And we are on to Christmas DIY number one. This is a fast, easy, and budget-friendly project. You need a green foam wreath from Dollar Tree and three of these microfiber mop heads from Dollar Tree, which you will find back by the mops and brooms. 
You only need three. Three is the perfect size to finish this project. You're going to take each microfiber mop head, fold it widthwise, and cut it in half. Now I'm going to tell you this is a really messy project in that those microfiber little fuzzies fly all over the place and you can see that I have my Cricut mats in the background there and that is very bad. Don't let your Cricut mats or uh, sticky mats lay around because these fuzzies go everywhere. You're going to take each mat and fold it over the ring and attach it to e itself. Pick which side of the ring is going to be your back. You're going to glue all four sides, undersides of the uh, square and then lay the square under the ring and fold it over the ring just like that and attach it to itself just like that. Now I'm using the Gorilla Glue uh, hot glue sticks and you will use a lot of glue sticks. I'll tell you that right now. So I'm going to glue hot glue all four sides of the, of the uh, microfiber square. Then I'm going to lay it down, put the wreath form on top of it, and fold the full, uh, square over the wreath. Now the only thing you have to be really careful of in this project is to be sure you put each square bumped right up next to the previous square so that you don't have any green wreath form showing through, that the seams are really tight. The six squares will work perfectly around that ring, but be sure that you bump each square up against the previous square so that there's no seams that you can see. You don't want any seams to, you don't want any of the green foam to be seen through. See how I'm laying it right next to the previously laid uh, square. And don't worry, some of the squares are will be cattywampus because you're putting square uh, squares on a round wreath, but that's okay. It'll come out perfect when you're done the, with the six squares. Just wrap it around, attach it to itself, and make sure that it's bumped up tight against the previous square so that there's uh, no openings. And that's all you do. Put on those six squares around the wreath, nice and tight, and then I didn't use a bow. I wanted it to be kind of plain, but I got these three Christmas trees in a pack from Dollar Tree, and that's what I use to decorate my wreath with. And they're really neat because they have these little white stands on the bottom, which make it easy to uh, glue into the wreath. And, of course, you could get a church or you could get a little fairy you know, those little uh, things that they have, like a fairy land to glue uh, into it. So, see, I'm showing you how tight I had put each square next to each other so that there's no seams and there's nothing showing through. Okay, so there are the trees. Got a Dollar Tree. There's the little white stands you can see. And I just hot glued those on the bottom, what I chose to be the bottom of the wreath, and then I took some white fuzz and put them up around the trees. It looks like snow. And then I had this uh, ribbon that I got at Dollar Tree Silver, and I used that to make a hanger that I hot glued on the back, and that's it. See how easy that is? Easy, fun, budget-friendly, and I think it makes a beautiful wreath. There you go. So easy and so fun. I hope you like it. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. And we'll go on to DIY number two. 
Okay, DIY number two for Christmas. This is a fun and easy one too. So I got a cookie sheet, cookie pan from Dollar Tree, 13 by 9 inch. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I sprayed it with my flat white primer. And uh, then I pulled a big no-no. I Mod Podged it. Do not put Mod Podge on it. Do not do that. That's wrong. Then I ordered some off of Etsy, some Christmas countdown uh, designs. I got like six or seven of them for two bucks. And I picked one of them and I cut it off and I put it on my cookie pan after I scraped off all the Mod Podge and repainted it with uh, chalk paint. Okay, now I'm going to use one of these little magnets that I got at Dollar Tree. This works perfectly. Okay, so you don't have a Cricut or a Silhouette. You can always use stickers and window uh, things that you put on the window for, for your designs. So I'm going to use that little magnet. I'm going to hot glue this little bow that I had in my stash. And I have little green bows that I'm going to put a, up there in the corner. And I'm going to hot glue the red bow on the magnet, which sticks to the cookie pan just fine. And, you know, you can just pick out designs. I put that little Santa Claus hat face up there because there was a red Santa Claus hat, but it kind of faded in with the white. So I just uh, hot glued that little Santa Claus face up there. And the magnet just holds on to the cookie pan. And I made it for the little kids next door and they can just move it around. And I really like this design because the last four days get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so there it is. But do not put Mod Podge on before you lay down your vinyl letters. That does not work. It's, it was a big boo-boo. Okay, so there it is. And like I said, you can use stencils or sticker letters to do this. And I think it came out real cute. I'm putting it on one of those uh, little holders. And that's it. Christmas DIY number three. Just as easy as the first two. So I got a pizza pan. And I sprayed it with the white primer. But I did paint over it with the white chalk paint. Because to be honest with you, I nicked it a little bit bringing it upstairs. We live in a condo and I have to spray paint things outside. Then I have this gold tube stuff that I got at Dollar Tree and I put on Merry Christmas from my Cricut and then I used tacky glue to uh, glue that gold tube stuff around the inside of the pizza pan which I will never do again because it was really hard to get it to stick. See how I have all the little clips there to try and hold it? So th that's not a good idea. Then I decided to paint the around the uh, rim of the pizza pan with my red chalk paint. Then I Mod Podged it and everything stuck just fine. Then I had gone to Hobby Lobby and they had all their beautiful picks on sale for half price. And I'm trying to show you that this was $2.99, so I paid a dollar and a half for it. And I got a whole bunch of picks at Hobby Lobby for 50% off. And my craft room is just filled with picks everywhere. And I just have them all over the place because I bought a whole bunch, but they were just beautiful. Little hot glue got there. Okay, and so I put that on and made it real fancy. I thought that was just a beautiful pick. There I have another little Santa Claus face that I'm... It has a sticky on the back, but I still hot glue it on. I'm going to put that on. And then I took some of the other picks and took them apart and put around the outside. Then I'm going to use one of those... That uh, tube thing, and I hot glued it, and then I put some painter's... Uh, tape on the back to make sure it holds and it did fine. It's been hanging in my craft room for a week now and it holds just fine and then I did another one and I used the white nautical rope and I really like it better and it sure was easier than using that tubey stuff. I wouldn't use that tubey stuff again. That was too hard to make stick and I used some different uh, picks 
and the little Santa Claus face. So there's the first one I did with the green tubey stuff. It just took a lot of patience to make it stick where I wanted it to stick. And uh, I, But I still think it came out real pretty. And then there's the second one, and I really like the white nautical rope better. I think it just adds more, and it sure was easier. So tell me which one is your favorite. Do you like the green tubey stuff or the white nautical rope? All right, let's get on to DIY number three. I told you these are fast. Okay, this is Christmas DIY number four, the last one for this video. So for this one, I got this uh, frame. And I'm going to use green acrylic paint. I don't like using acrylic paint. It takes too long to dry, but it's the green I wanted. And I have this little picture frame, and I have that Merry Christmas tree that I, in my stash. I have that gold Merry Christmas thing in my stash. And I'm going to use that green um, scrapbook paper that I had from last year, too. So I'm going to take off the bead hanger. I'm not going to use that. And then I'm going to tie and take off the sticker from the back. And, you know, some of those stickers come off really, really easily. And some of them you have to really, really work. And this was one of those that I used my heat gun. It was just really hard to take off, but I eventually got it off. And then I wanted to make it into like a shadow box and taking that back off again, I used my heat gun and finally I had to get out the heavy duty hammer to get the back off, but I got it off. So there it is, it's, it's off. And so then I had to take my, um, scraper there and scrape off the part that was kind of rough but it was okay it all worked out so then I took my green acrylic paint it was the perfect green it was the Christmas green and I don't have that green and chalk paint so I had to use the acrylic and you know the acrylic just takes so long to dry but you just have to have some patience so I painted the frame inside outside and the top and bottom, and then I painted that green uh, Christmas tree cutout. It was like a laser cutout. Painted it all green and uh, let everything dry. Then I took the what was the back of the, oh, I painted the picture frame too. And then what was the back of the uh, picture frame, I used the scrapbooking paper and I cut it out and I attached it uh, with the tacky glue. I like using the tacky glue or glue stick is good because it doesn't make it bumpy. So I just laid it down and traced around it and cut it out and attached it because that's going to be my background to my shadow box. Very easy. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I used the tacky glue. Now, I want to put a Christmas tree in there, but I want it to be flat against the back of the shadow box. This is not a Nona original. I saw someone else doing this. They took the Christmas tree and cut off the back so it's flat, so it'll lay flat against the back of the shadow box. I thought that was pretty smart. I'm just going to take that idea and borrow it and share it with everybody else and I don't know who I saw do it. I've seen a couple YouTubers do that. All right, so everything's dry. So now I'm going to use my super glue, and I'm going to glue the back to what was the front and make it into a shadow box. The super glue is really good. All right, just like that. So now when I turn it over, I have a shadow box. All right, so now it's ready to, to build. So I'm, first I'm going to take that Christmas tree and I'm going to glue the back flat part into the corner. Then I'm going to take that Merry Christmas, that gold hanging Merry Christmas, and I'm going to hang it up in the corner. I'm going to glue the string to the back so it's hanging down, which sounds real easy, but it really took me a while to fits with it to get it to hang just straight. Then I use these magnets. These are large magnets that I got at Dollar Tree, four of them. I put two on the frame, on the picture frame. Then I put two on the little picture frame, okay, going the opposite direction. Then I'm going to use this display easel because I wanted the picture frame to stand out. And you can see where I put the little Christmas tree back there too. 
and I put a picture of my great grandson in there. And so the picture frame, the little picture frame is 3D. All right. So I've got the brush tree, the flat laser print Christmas tree, and the little frame with the picture of my great grandson in it. And because it's 3D, it has to sit on that easel, but the picture of the baby comes out. So I think it came out real cute. Tell me what you think in the comments down below.